What's going on, y'all? Thanks for checking in the Cali's Take. You know what to do. Hit that like, subscribe button. Also hit that notification bell just so you can get the newest and the bonus content first. But hey, let's just go ahead and jump right in. Clippers player Jay Scrub um, says he has a lot to prove, you know, to himself and to the team. You know, you can um, definitely take this how you want. Um, you know, in my estimation, I definitely hate to hear, you know, um, players say this in a way where they seem down on themselves. Now, they're just saying it in a way where, you know, it's more uplifting and they're just trying to, you know, make their way. That's understandable. But, you know, looking at Jay Scrub's situation, um, he's in his sophomore season or sophomore year. Um, in the league and you know up to this point you know it just things hasn't worked out it's been injuries and setbacks and I know those things are never good but they really bother young players a lot of times because you come into the league young fresh you feel like you're immortal for a while you feel like you know you can't get injured but you know the reality is you can get injured at any point any time just like a veteran player just like a a, a player who's about to retire or whatever the case may be and um you know listen to looking at some of the uh, reports and what jay scrub is speaking on he definitely feels like he needs to redeem himself based upon how he started now he came in as a 55th pick um in the 2020 draft and, you know, since then, it's been nothing but injuries predominantly. Like I said, his rookie year, I think he played four or five games and he had he had a, some type of foot injury that kept him out a lot. And really, you know, listen to the reports and everything and like kind of getting the uh, understanding of where Jay is coming from. You know, he's trying to find his way, work his way into the rotation. Well, I'm going to say this for Jay Scrub. I hope that he really finds his way. I hope that he finds his footing because he's definitely from what I've seen, you know, know just uh some of the highlights i've seen of him, some of his gameplay the limited gameplay i saw i could see some talent in the guy i really can um but you know at the same time it's going to be tough for jay scrub because brandon boston is playing you know, he played good this past season um you know, then you had Amir Coffee play good, you know what I'm saying? Then you got Kawhi and PG coming back healthy. It's going to be very, very hard for him to gain any minutes, you know, with this team or get back into the rotation how he, or get into the rotation or work his way into the rotation like he would like to um, simply because the team is so stacked. I don't really know where he would fit in. You see what I'm saying? I don't think I don't think nobody, you know, thinks that he's a better player than Brandon Boston or has more upside. Amir Coffey came out of nowhere uh, when needed, and he came in and dropped 30 points like several games, you know, for the Clippers, like back to back. You know what I'm saying? Or had 20, 30 plus points for several couple of games. So, you know, it's like for Jay Scrub, I really hope that he finds his footing. You know, I think he's got talent, things like that, you know, but at the same time, finding your way in Tyler lose rotation could be difficult based upon you know what has already been put in place because like I said with Kawhi and PG coming back you know um you know Luke Kennard and you know Terrence Mann definitely got their got their minutes in locked in you know and like I said the way Brandon Boston played last year he, he you know he definitely surprised a lot of people and a lot of people like his upside the most out of all the young players they have and then Amir Coffey came out of nowhere then nobody didn't really know anything about him at all he was like basically a nobody on the bench and turned into a somebody you know in the regular season those several games that he played scored over 20 plus and had a couple 30 plus point games you know so um like i said you know jay scrub has got some talent but i don't really know how many minutes he's going to get or how much he's going to be able to prove to this team i mean i think he'll get some opportunities but it's going to be very limited because the team might be looking at he's got a lot of talent because they kept them on there but they're looking at him being injury prone and coming into the league injury prone like that it can wane on a young player's confidence and i feel like that's what it's starting to do with jay scrub if it hasn't already so i mean i'm hoping that you know more good things will come out of him you know in regards to you know him just you know getting his footing under him playing more you know um getting some minutes in there and you know getting some confidence because like i said a lot of times when situations like this happen it's a sad thing because it, it ruins a player's confidence because they're so young and they feel like they're immortal like I said and sometimes that can come back to haunt you because just because you're young it doesn't mean you can't get injured now of course you feel like you can't get injured because everything is clicking you just made it to the NBA you know you got a way to take care of your family you got a way to do a lot more things than what you could do before you made it to the NBA but it seemed like it all came to a halt or a stop because 
of, um, you know, injury issues. And uh, I definitely feel for players like that because you know, sometimes you never really get to see how good a player is because they never get the opportunity because of injuries. And he might be, you know, one of the best players that come out that draft, but you might not ever know it because the playing time is very limited. You're not getting playing time over Terrence Mann or over uh, Luke Kennard, you know, players like that. And you know, it's, it's just going to be tough, you know, and um, I feel like Ty Lue will try to fit him in there. They still got him on the roster for a reason. And, um, you know, the fact that he's, you know, basically saying he has a lot to prove, you know, I respect that. I really do. Um, and I want to see him prove it. And so does the rest of the Clippers nation want to see him prove it. And, um, see or who knows about him and, and you know to see if he can actually live up to you know the type of expectation he has for himself and as i said i really hope so but i'm just not really sure um like i said i believe he'll get healthier you know what i'm saying but um as far as the playing time not sure and then you know this off season too you know his contract is only about like 1.5 million i think you know, he could be a part of a package deal of, you know, maybe a trade acquisition or something like that as well. So you definitely don't want to rule that out because it's all about business too. you know, the NBA is a game, but it is also a business at the same time. So, I mean, a player like him who has not stayed healthy in his early career, you know, um, the owners and the front office and, you know, people like that definitely might, you know, use him as a package deal to send him off somewhere else. You know, if they can acquire somebody else that can better their chances of winning a championship. Now, I hope that he does stay on the Clippers. Um, I hope that, you know, he does, you know, stay a part of the team and, and, you know, allow himself to grow. And Ty Lue allow him to grow because I definitely think a coach like Ty Lue knows how to pull the right strings and get the best out of players, even though players might not, you know, um, you know, be playing their best, but Ty Lue definitely gives opportunity. He's definitely an equal opportunistic type coach. And those are the type coaches that, you know, most players, young players flourish with because they're given the opportunity that other young players in the league aren't given based upon the coaches, you know, ways of, you know, coaching and certain people he desires to put in the lineup, certain people he desires not to. So, you know, with Ty Lue, the chances are definitely open for him to, you know, um, live up to his own expectations and the Clippers expectations of him so it's just gonna be tough like I said and um like I said we'll see what happens after this offseason here because I think um going into next year he's gonna probably need to stay healthy as much as possible play you know as much as possible whenever his number is called and kind of just go from there because like I said um after next year, maybe things might be different. He might be on the team. He might not. Who knows? But um, if, if he's going to prove himself, now is the time. I'll definitely say that. So um, and like I said, you know, we'll have to see what happens in this offseason, too. He could be a part of a package deal trade or something like that as well. So, you know, I don't want to say too much. But um, in regards to that, because we don't know as of yet. But um, I definitely hope he finds his footing and find his way, because I hate to see a situation of a young player who's got a lot of talent like Jay Scrub, who has a lot of athleticism, could shoot the three pretty decent. And, um, you know, he, he's, he's definitely one of those players, that I think, that can, you know, be a diamond in the rough, you know, sort of say kind of how I looked at Brandon Boston Jr. So um, we have to see what it, you know, see, see how um, the, you know, the dice falls for him and how it plays out. But, um, you know, good luck to him. And hopefully, you know, he gets some playing time. Hopefully we get to see him a little bit more and see what he's got. And um, hopefully he stays healthy as well. But hey, that's my take on everything. Leave any comments in the comment section. As always, check out my other videos if you haven't. And hey. Kelly out.